So now we're going to do it in Excel. <laughs> now it makes more sense to do it in Excel if you are doing some kind of actual data stuff because in Excel you can print it out or put it in your document or whatever you might be doing. So we're going to go ahead and go to Excel here again and I am just going to go to a new blank workbook. I should have a print out of your paper so I know what it says. <laughs> so it says before you can use the histogram tool you have to make sure that the analysis tool pack add-in is installed. Um, hopefully it's going to let us do this because I didn't double check. If you don't have administrative rights, we're going to see. So, to check to see if the um, analysis tool pack is installed, click on the data tab and look to the right to see if there's a data analysis option, which mine does not have. So, in order to install that, I would have to go to File, go to the Options, look for Add-ins. I'm going to do that while I can remember that much. So, up here, File. Was it Options? And then Add-ins. Add-ins is down here. And I'm looking to see which one of those tool things they want. It just says go to the analysis tool pack, which is just the top one, Excel add in. So I'm just going to highlight that one and see if it works. There we go. That's what I didn't do. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I didn't hit something I was supposed to. Options. If I go to my add-ins and I click the analysis tool pack, I have to click go down here next to my Excel add-ins. And then I have to put a little mark in the box there. Analysis tool pack. And now I'm going to hit OK and see if it works. So now if I go to data, there we go. Now I have data analysis up on the top. Once you install it once, you don't have to do it every time, but <laughs> if you hit go down here on the bottom, put the little check mark next to the top one there, and then hit OK. Now if you click on your data tab up on the top, it should be there. There it is. Mm -hmm. Alright, anybody else having trouble with that? Nope, you already have your tab done. Because <laughs> I'm slow, we got it in there. Okay, so. Um, click on that, click on go, and that's checked, hit OK. If you hit data up here, then it's over here. Now you'll have all the statistics analysis that we can do. And you've got yours on there, and you're trying to redo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, now that we have that on there, we hopefully can follow the directions on my paper. We're now going to create our histogram. Enter the data into the Excel spreadsheet in column A. Again, I would copy and paste them over and then you'll have to type them. Were those the same numbers I used before? I think so. They are. Hey, I can use my first spreadsheet if I didn't clear out my numbers. <laughs> I'm going to clear out my other stuff that's on there and get it out of the way. But I believe those are the same numbers from before that we sorted. So if you hadn't cleared out that Excel spreadsheet, you already have them in there. If not, you'll have to put them in there. 
So enter your data into the Excel spreadsheet. Enter your bin range, which is the values for your x-axis and your b column. So in your b column, those are going to be the values we would have put along the bottom of our table. We are using initial class boundary of 0.5, ending of 45.5, and remember when we had five equal class widths, we added nine there. So in column B, you're going to start with your 0 0.5 and add nine each time. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to see if I fill down if it adds them for me. Hey, it did, only I got an extra one because I fell down too far. So if you've used Excel, had Lori's class, after you've typed a few in, if you highlight and then grab that little box in the corner and fill down, then it automatically just adds your nine every time for you. <laughs> so in column one, we have our values. In column two, we have what they call the bin range, which is the values you would want each of your things to be on. And then go to the Data tab, click on Data Analysis, find the one that says Histogram. So back over here on my Excel spreadsheet, so on the Data tab at the top, Data Analysis, and then you got to scroll down, to, well you probably don't have to scroll, it's down in the bottom, we're doing Histogram, hit OK. My input range, I'm going to click and drag over column A. Those are my numbers. And once you get to the bottom, make sure you click again. My bin range is my column B. So I click on the top one, highlight, click on the bottom. Whoops, that didn't give me the whole bin range. There we go. My bin range, select output range for where you want your histogram to show up. I put D3 in mine. Click on the box next to chart output, put a check mark in the box and click OK. So my output range I said I put in D3 and then I had to put a little check in the box that said chart output down there on the box. So my histogram page should look something sort of like that. My data from column A is my input, B is my bin range. This is just where you want your graph to show up. I picked D3 just for fun. And then you have to do the chart output and hit OK. Hey, look at that. Notice the labels do not line up nicely. Under the bin, change the values so they say up to in front. Now my son, he spent hours and hours and hours trying to move those labels so they lined up with the tick marks. You can't do it, it doesn't work. So if you just go to your bin range here and put up to, so that this section says up to 0 0.5, up to 9.5, then that takes care of my labeling issue as far as what goes in there. So I'm just going to click in there. I'm going to type in up to 0 0.5 and notice it updates my histogram there. And then I just added that in front of each one of them. And since the 45.5 is your last one, you can just delete out the more if you would like. And notice then I get rid of the more and that's not showing up there. Unless I really want it to show up, it doesn't really make any difference. It's kind of how you want your histogram to show up. Now if you've done Excel, you probably know that you can click and change the headings and if you knew what that was a graph of, you could change your labels and all of that fun stuff so that if you were using it for some kind of report, you had the appropriate labels and everything on you. Everybody getting that to work out right? Oh, one other thing. That's not really a histogram, that's a bar chart. 
Did I put that on here? Oh yeah. No, I didn't. What's a bin range? The bin range is the values that we would have normally put on the bottom of our graph. The starting one was 0 0.5, and then we had 9.5, 18.5. So where do you want? So in column B, you're just going to start 0 0.5, 9.5, 18.5, up to your 45.5. If you want that to look more like a histogram, if you right click and go to, where was that at? I just did clicked on it and now I don't have what I want. Oh, maybe because I was on that already. Alright. Chart type? No. I want to change my chart type. There, that looks pretty. <laughs> so, if I right click, well, that's took off my labels. My goodness. Shh. Change chart type. Okay. Let me go back to that one where my labels were normal. Where was that? Was it format axis? Select data. Nope, that wasn't where it was. Maybe I have to be on the bars. There we go. It's hiding. So if I click on my bars and right click and go to format data series, it's hiding over here because it thinks. See, there's a. Uh, gap in between there. If I change my gap to zero, now it looks more like a histogram. I put that somewhere. <laughs> so if you want it not to look like a bar chart and you want it to look like a histogram, click on the bar so that your bars are highlighted and then go to format data series and change the gap width to zero. You don't want any gaps between the bars if you have a histogram. If you truly have a histogram. I'm stuck right here. Do I do this? Just press OK. Um, histogram, output, range, overwrite existing data. Yeah, go ahead and hit OK. Histogram, output, range, overwrite existing data. Yeah, go ahead and hit OK. OK, let's see. All right, let's see here. Oh, see what you put your output range is overlapping with this. My output range, we put D3, so you're not on top of your data. And then we are going to do the chart output so that the chart shows up. So we've got to check that box. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why it was giving you that because you had it on B1 and that was on top of your data. It didn't like that. So we moved it over to D3. All right. Then we said here, if we click on the bars and right click, we can format the data series and change this to zero. And enter. And now there's no spaces there. Okay. The other thing you could do is on the names, if we add just up to in front of that, so that it doesn't look like this is just 0.5, nope, you're going to type in the words, up to. <laughs> oh, T, T hole, up to, not to, <laughs> not the number two, but the word two, space, and then enter. Notice how it changed it. So this is the section that goes up to 0 0.5. This would be the section that goes up to 9.5. So I just added that in front of each of those, the up to. Okay. And that way your label matches more of what your data is actually describing. Mm -hmm. I have a question there. I don't know how that um, that cut is automatically on there. Oh, okay. I deleted mine now. Oh, okay. You can leave it there or you can delete it off if you don't want more to show up on oh, your okay. thing. So yes, the more will automatically show up every time. You can take it out if you don't like it. 
So you need your ding ranges in there yet. So we have you both have your data in there, sort of, but I think we're, <laughs> I don't know if you deleted something out of that front thing. I'm going to cancel that for a minute. Maybe it's just, I don't know what is up there. Seven. It says it's supposed to be a seven, but we're going to try it. The bin range is the values that we normally have along the bottom of our history. So we're going to start with 0 0.5. Go ahead and type in 0 0.5, and we add 9 each time. So 9.5, 18.5, and so forth. Now what you could do is once you have a few in there, is you can use your pull down command. I got an extra one, I'm going to get rid of <laughs> And then you've got them in there, okay? So first column is your data, second is the labels along the bottom of your history. So now we go to data analysis. On the histogram, we hit OK. The input range is your data. The output range is your bin numbers. Then we said we want to kick out our graph. We put it on cell D3. That would be over here. Otherwise, we don't want it over here in A or B because it would get something else. But you can put it over further wherever you want your boxes to show up. And we also are going to output the chart. So we click that, hit OK. Your chart and see what it looks like. <laughs> all right. Lori told me everybody's going to know how to do all this already because they took Excel. <laughs> I said, yeah, they are. 